Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about the entitled narcissist. Entitlement is one of the nine characteristics of the narcissist personality disorder. In order for someone to have the narcissist personality disorder to be on the spectrum of the disorder, they would need at least five of the nine characteristics. I'll link this video up here or up here, wherever it ends up to explain more on those. People can also have narcissism or they can be narcissistic just like people can be empathetic, just like people can be negative, people can be sad, people can be happy, people can be narcissistic. Doesn't make them a narcissist. So this video is to explain more about entitlement. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. When it comes to being around people, if you're around a negative person long enough, they're going to bring the negativity out in you. If you're around a high achiever for long enough that's pushing you to achieve, they are going to bring the achievements out within you. If you are around someone who's sad and depressed, for long enough without taking care of yourself. They're going to bring that sadness uh, within, within you out. If you are around a narcissist for long enough, they are going to bring that narcissism out within you. Those people who you surround yourself with are the people who bring out that side in you doesn't make you a narcissist, although often many want out of these kinds of relationships and discover the disorder and start learning about the disorder, end up questioning if they are a narcissist, which is most understandable after everything you've been through and everything they have done to you. People also claim that narcissist personality disorder is rare. There is some that say only 0.5% of the population have the disorder. There is some that say 3% of the population have the disorder. There is those that say narcissists are very difficult to get a diagnosis so we don't know the true numbers of people who have the disorder. However, my maths might not be perfect so please alter in the comments if I'm wrong. If there is 78 billion people within the world and for easy math's sake we say one percent of the population has the disorder itself that means 78 million people have the disorder if they all affect one partner each that's 78 million people impacted by somebody with the narcissist personality disorder. Most narcissists don't just negatively impact one person's life. One person's narcissistic partner is another person's narcissistic friend, narcissistic boss, narcissistic work colleague, narcissistic parent, narcissistic child, narcissistic cousin, narcissistic sibling, the list goes on. So if we say a narcissist, a narcissistic parent impacts their partner's life that's one person if they have one child and they impact that one child's life that's two people that's 156 million people affected impacted by somebody on the spectrum of the disorder if they've had more than one partner that could be two partners if they have two children that could be two children they could have impacted four people within their lives. 
So then that's 312 million people negatively impacted by somebody with the personality disorder. Then we can have people with high traits of narcissism, high levels of narcissism. They might only have one, two or three of the characteristics and they might impact those characteristics negatively in their life, which impacts those around them. So the numbers just keep going up and going up and going up. It doesn't really matter how many are out there. It doesn't really matter whether somebody has the disorder or not. It's more to explain the reason behind somebody's behaviour rather than to excuse their behaviour. If somebody brings out the worst in you, if somebody exploits you, if somebody humiliates you, if somebody scapegoats you, if somebody shames and blames you, if somebody repeatedly lets you down, if somebody repeatedly lies to you, it doesn't matter who they are as a person. What matters is we learn what we've been through so that we don't go through it again. We learn our values, we learn our beliefs, we raise our standards and we create our boundaries and we lower our expectations of those who like to frustrate us. When it comes to narcissists, those who bring out your anger, when we don't let go of our anger, they have control of our emotions. One of the characteristics of the disorder is entitlement and many people when they learn about that characteristic can question that there's a few people in their lives that act like that if those people hurt you if those people break promises on you if those people have a negative impact in your life whether they are narcissistic or not they are not the kind of people you want to keep close if you, for example, go out to work and expect to be paid for the job that you do, that doesn't make you a narcissist. If you are having a week where one thing after another thing after another thing is happening to you and you can't shift out of your thought process, you're struggling to leave the where is me and you're complaining a lot more than often, that doesn't by itself make you a narcissist. That makes you human, that's life's happening to you. Sometimes it's hard to shift out of the why is this happening to me and turn into what is this teaching me? What can I do about it? Life has a way of knocking you down and just as you get back up, it comes and knocks you straight back down again. And we are the ones that have to find the coping techniques that are right for us to overcome these hurdles, to find our happiness, which is often why a sense of humour is a must. If you trip over and you start complaining and whining and being upset, it's going to bring you down. If you start walking with your head down and your shoulders down, it's going to bring you down. If you trip over, you can't do anything about the fact that you've tripped over. You've already tripped over. If you're not injured, if you're not in serious pain, you can get up, you can raise your shoulders, you can lift your head up and you can laugh it off and it has a far better impact on your life than being sad or mad or complaining about it. We can all get into a routine within our lives and then things come along and create that busyness within us. We can all start to become that preoccupied with what is happening within our own life. We're not paying enough attention to what's happening with those loved ones around us. We can all get to a point where that we're that busy working, we're that busy running around doing what we need to do that we forget to help those who we care about. We can all hold a grudge against someone that's done wrong by us, that has exploited us. 
that's lied to us, that's cheated on us, that's hurt us. We can all hold a grudge against somebody who has conned us, who has duped us. It's down to us to work on overcoming that grudge, but we can all go through a pattern of holding a grudge. It doesn't make you a narcissist. Holding a grudge for a period of time in your life, that one grudge for that one moment in time because somebody duped you does not make you a narcissist. Most people can bend the rules. Most people can find a way to rationalise, to bend the rules to suit themselves without malice intent, believing they're not harming anybody else in doing so. Bending the rules, although technically no, we shouldn't bend the rules, doesn't make you a narcissist. Wanting more out of life, wanting to achieve more. If you're working hard to achieve more, if you have goals, if you're looking for growth, if you achieve one thing, then you're looking to achieve the next thing without stepping over people to get there, without exploiting people to get there. There is no wrong in having life goals. In fact, life goals are what get you out of bed in the morning. There is no wrong in, once you've achieved something, looking for the next achievement. If you're doing it from a good place, if you're doing it from your heart, if you're doing it from your passion, if you're doing it from your dreams, if it gets you up and going and motivated in the morning, there is nothing wrong with wanting more out of your life. It does not make you a narcissist. What pe puts people either on the spectrum of narcissism or having narcissistic personality disorder, if they have the traits, five of the nine traits of the disorder, is somebody who is envious of others. Somebody who, no matter what they've taken from others, they are looking to exploit others to achieve more. No matter what people give them, it is never enough for them. Whereas having goals is no matter what you have achieved for yourself and often with these achievements you might have helped others along the way you are looking to achieve more for yourself more often than not helping others in some way claiming that others are privileged in life some people are or seem privileged. We don't always see the background to what people have been through and some people are very underprivileged. When we can't see what somebody else has been through, when we haven't lived their life, when we can't see what is happening to somebody else, when we haven't lived that moment in time, doesn't mean it's not happened to that person. It just means we haven't experienced it. You can go all out working hard to achieve something and someone can come along and beat you to it because they've worked all out to achieve that thing. And it, it can knock people back a bit when they've put all their time and effort into something and someone comes along with something better, it can make you think twice. However, you've got to sort of look at that person and think, well, what did they do? How can I alter what I did? How can I achieve more? Narcissistic people will think, how can I tear that person down as quickly as I possibly can so that I come out on top? Most people, they might feel a little knocked back, but they would, even through grit and teeth sometimes, they would appreciate what the person's have achieved, praise the person's achievements and then go and work on themselves and remember they're only in competition with themselves. It's like running a race, you are in that race to win it. If you came second and you didn't feel disappointed, it wouldn't give you the drive to run faster in the next race, to train harder, to work harder. What it doesn't do is 
want you to go and sabotage that other person, trip that other person up. A narcissist will want to sabotage that other person, trip that other person. They're looking for the quick fix, the easy win. So when it comes to entitlement within a narcissist, it's the intent behind that entitlement. It's the intent behind their behaviour. It's a pattern of behaviour. There is those on the spectrum of the disorder who have a pattern of behaviour and it's who they are as a person and you're not going to change them as a person because they have those five to nine characteristics. That is what their personality runs off. That is their beliefs. That is who they are as a person. You can have someone with one or two traits of narcissism, but in a positive way. Someone who's preoccupied with creating their ideal, but not harming people in achieving this in a positive way. You can have someone with one or two traits of narcissism in a negative way. And those are the people that you need to protect your emotional health around and your psychological health around. You need to be aware of their patterns of behaviour so that you can observe their behaviour and not absorb their behaviour. You are only in control of who you are as a person. You can lead by example. If people want to take that lead, good. If people want to destroy you, walk away from them. So when it comes to a narcissist entitlement, this is where they will rarely help out, yet expect, expect people to help them. Two, they will be more than happy to take from others. Even if they do it in a, oh, I shouldn't really, are you sure kind of way, they will take from others they'll not be so willing to give only if by giving they can take something. Often holds grudges, but they hold a lifetime of grudges against many different people for many different things. Anybody they don't get on with will not be a case of, mm, well, we just doesn't really gel, we just don't really get on anymore. We brought the worst out in each other. Well, it's just one of those things anyone, a narcissist, doesn't get on with. They hold a grudge against as they believe the other person is at fault for everything. Four, they don't take responsibility for their own behaviour. They don't take responsibility for their own mistakes. They don't take responsibility for their own lessons. They don't take responsibility for their own losses to a narcissist, it's always somebody else's fault. They believe they deserve special attention. And if they're not getting that special attention, they are going to hold that grudge. Six, rarely to never admitting fault. If they do, it's a case of, I'm sorry, you. They distract you with the, I'm sorry, so it seems like they are apologising and then they slip in that you to blame it on you. They are always looking to blame somebody else. I'm sorry if this hadn't have happened. So they're almost apologising to distract you from the fact that they're not apologising as they are looking for ways to pass the blame because they don't want to admit any faults within who they are as a person. Seven, I think the rules don't apply to them yet because they are the self-entitled hypocrite, they think the rules apply to you. So this isn't a case of bending the rules and seeing somebody else bending the rules to try and adjust things, to try and make life work for them. This is a narcissist breaking the rules, yet if you break the rules, you're wrong. However, they're allowed to. Eight, no matter what you do for them, no matter what you give them, they are always going to expect you to do more. They are always going to expect you to give more. They're always going to expect you 
to be more. They're always going to expect you to just know. Nine, envious of other people. So they seek to pull others down to feel better about themselves. Ten, claims others have all the luck. Any difficulties somebody else is going through, they're going to go all out to discredit them. They're going to go all out to bring them down. They're going to go all out to gaslight and change the story, change the reality on that person because they believe that others are privileged. They believe that others have gone against them. Always finding something to complain about, even when there isn't anything to complain about. When life is going plain sailing, straightforward, happy-go-lucky with a narcissist and they're in a mood, they're going to find something to complain about, to change the atmosphere, to set the stage, to alter the environment because they're in a mood, because they're unhappy. They're going to go all out to start complaining, moaning, bringing everybody else down and then more often than not as soon as they've brought everybody else down they become happy again. Most people don't enjoy seeing other people unhappy. It doesn't bring them pleasure. With a narcissist they often feel better about themselves when they've made those around them unhappy although to escape any feelings of shame, they blame those around them for why the narcissist made them unhappy or they deny all knowledge. 12, a complete lack of self-awareness. When it comes to somebody on the narcissist personality disorder, it's going to be very rare to hear them go, was it me? Was it them? Am I the narcissist? I could be the narcissist. I think it, uh, they're gonna be going, no, it's them. It's all them. It's all their fault. I did nothing wrong. The thing is, when you are around people, if you don't bring out the best in each other, if you're not supportive of each other, sometimes 50-50, sometimes 80-20, depending who's going through what. Sometimes it might flip the other 20-80, depending who's going through what. If it's not 50-50, if you're not raising each other up. If you're not wanting to see each other succeed, they're not the kind of people you want to be spending your time with. If you don't feel safe around somebody, you need to find a safe way to get away from that person. Please add in the comments any thoughts you have on this video. I am currently full for one-to-one -one coaching. I have partnered with BetterHelp their sponsored link is in the description. Thank you very much for listening. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.